you said your first experience was, uh, you know, that kind of moved it from recreational to something else. Uh, this more intentional use was with DMT. Um, and then did you try, so then you wanted to kind of slow down the experience and ayahuasca, you know, is this like slow release version of DMT for anyone who doesn't know. Yeah. And did you try pharmawaska first, this kind of, I guess, like pharmaceutically constructed version of ayahuasca? No, we, we actually did ayahuasca uh, first. So we, we found uh, a retreat um, in, in Switzerland, which is where I live. And so, yeah, we, we found somewhere f we, we could get to without doing too much traveling. Um, and so we did that and it, and it wasn't a brilliant retreat, which again tied into my kind of part of my motivation to do these retreat reviews. It was a, yeah, not well organized at all, but the, the medicine experience though, I saw there was some potential in that. So I, I kind of recognized, okay, I need to find a better retreat, but there is something here worth exploring. And I think it did a couple more retreats locally and it's again, still, it was something was happening, but not quite. Um, you know, the, the extravagant, you know, shenanigans of, of what's associated with ayahuasca, but it still has, there's some potential there. And then I was, I was kind of coming around to the idea like, okay, perhaps I need to just go and do this in its native setting. I need to go and do it in Peru. But, and then it was just before I went to Peru, I thought, well, before I do that, I, I thought I'd try farm ayahuasca. So um, I did it farm ayahuasca like, I think it's like three times um, before I committed to going to Peru. And yeah, I had a very, quite powerful, pleasant experience with it. And I, th I think that one of the things that came to me during that farm of experience, I, I went in very, um, very cautious because at, at, at that time I was very deep into sort of into absorbing all the kind of like traditional stuff. I was like, like please, please don't punish me for, for taking this kind of shot. But please don't. You know? But uh, yeah, I had some really you know, good experiences with farm of and that kind of kind of stamp the passport then to say yeah go okay go to Peru and, and, and find out uh, what this is like in its traditional setting and and then I would say when I then went to Peru and had uh, which, which was this is my first experience with, with Wheeler and yeah his ayahuasca was just so much stronger than anything I'd had before that I was yeah just completely stunned I mean out of the four ceremonies I'd, I got to the third one and I just could not face the fourth ceremony because I was just had such a powerful experience the night before. I was just shaken to my core, like, and in a very positive way. But I was really, um, yeah, it g gave me a lot to to stew on. Right. And so, um, just to clarify for anyone um, who's not familiar with this, so you have DMT is the you know uh, psychedelic, very much like psilocybin or LSD, um, and then. I, in ayahuasca, you have you know, one DMT containing plant and one plant that contains chemicals that inhibit monoamine oxidase, mm -hmm. which is uh, something that digests DMT so it can be orally active, right? Because if you, if you just eat DMT, nothing will happen because the mm -hmm. monoamine oxidase breaks it down. And in farm ayahuasca, you're <clears throat> taking pure, the pure DMT chemical, but with some more of those kinds of chemicals, right? So in this case, was it, was it Syrian rue tea? Is that what you, you used for the farm Yeah, ayahuasca? exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think that... There is, so yeah, with, with farm ayahuasca, it was Syrian rue tea and free base DMT, whereas with ayahuasca, it's, it's the ayahuasca vine and uh, chacruna leaves contain the DMT. And I was surprised at the difference between those two experiences. I, you, you'd expect, because I, I, at the time I was very skeptical, I was thinking, you know, substances is substances, it's, it's all just going to be the same thing. And it's, it's not, there is some differences, but I, I guess you could also attribute some of that just to the, the cultural setting of, you know, what's happening in this sh shamanic setting because, you know, when, you, when you're on one of these experiences, just, the, sh just the, the, the type of music you're listening to can have so much affect how the experience plays out. Um, but it did seem, it was, it was very apparent to me that when I was in the, in the jungle setting, all this very typical Shipibo imagery, this kind of this tribal um, sort of Peruvian imagery, was there where before it had not been there it's so it's yeah is, is it something to do with the with the, the alkaloids in the ayahuasca in the sort of very traditional ayahuasca is it something to do with the shamanic setting is it a combination don't know but it's yeah. amazing <laughs> yeah there's definitely um was there was the entourage effect you know so i guess we're, we're brought up to kind of think in quite a reductionist way like you said like the chemicals the chemical and so i mean if you take something like thc you know the thing in, in marijuana that makes it psychoactive 
you know, cannabis smokers report that the ratio of CBD, which by itself isn't psychoactive, but CBD with mm-hmm. THC really changes the effects. And so similarly mm-hmm. with mushrooms, people are interested in whether psilocybin alone is the same as, you know, whether you get some entourage effect from all these other chemicals that aren't psychoactive by themselves. And with ayahuasca, the, the harmaline and all these other alkaloids that, that allow the DMT to be already active, they are by themselves psychoactive. So you do have some weird synergies going on. Um, mm-hmm. And so, yeah, but you're absolutely right as well. The context of the ceremony will make a big difference. It, it's kind of fascinating. And we're, I think we're really taking baby steps at the moment. We're really at the start of trying to understand these really complex um, yeah, effects of these kinds of potions, I guess. Um, which seems to be something people had a better knowledge of in traditional cultures, you know, the less kind of reductionist mindset than, than what we have. 